You're listening to Tori Ryder's She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. You know that person who tries to take over your block club or your garage band or your church group? Yeah, what do you do about that person? Marcy is still snowed in. She's got a strange job offer, but no miniature donkey yet. I loved your photos of being immersed in snow. That was fun to see those. Yeah, that's just phase one. It's still snowing. They predicted 24 inches. We're already up to over 16. So I think they're a little off, which is normal for up in the mountain. They don't really know. Is there some point at which your uh, your cabin collapses? No. We're solid. Good. Speaking of collapsing cabins, it's been an interesting week on the internet here if you've ever been part of a community where everybody mostly gets along and then somebody shows up with an agenda and starts to try to deconstruct the whole thing according to his or her own vision of how it should go. No, I don't believe in communities. Oh, well, that's convenient in this case. I'm a community of one. I, My opinion rules. Okay. Are, this You know, I'm I'm starting to see the wisdom of that, but... As you know, I belong to a couple of different groups, and I've seen this phenomenon now a few times where there's a certain expectation of collegiality and a certain acceptance of variations within the group, and then somebody shows up and they're like, oh, good, a group here that I can bend to my own purposes. Ugh. Yeah, um, this particular person in this particular group when I learned about her ideology and philosophy, I, I asked her, well, why, why did you join this group, which is so different from what you're talking about? She has a political view. And she said, well, I thought they'd be open to my political views. And I said, as far as I know, people are very willing to listen to everybody's political view. She said, yeah, that's true, but I was hoping I could change them. But no, no, nobody has really changed their opinion. And I said, that's not surprising. And then knowing her political views and as abhorrent as I found them, I just sort of left her alone. <laughs> and it's a big enough group that I don't really have to deal with her. Yeah. And as you know, my favorite Miss Manners quote of all time is, manners are what we have to rely on when we cannot be sincere. Exactly. So I'm polite, and she's polite, and I don't think she knows that I find her political views loathsome and detestable. She carries on, and every now and then she has a you know opportunity to speak publicly, and she speaks of these views that I find loathsome and detestable. And because we're a polite group, everybody listens politely. And she seems to have confused this with agreement. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've taken a whole, uh, pretty much my whole lifetime up to this point, learning how to be really nice to people that I detest. And then I get some kind of a self-satisfaction out of not punching them in the face. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. Recently, a turn in the tide of political events has given this woman hope. That, that she can now steer the group in her preferred direction. So she gave little speeches about how we should reconsider uh, the group's general attitude towards this political problem. And people listened politely. And then it went on to the worst possible place for these kinds of conversations to go and where would that be <laughs> to hell i wish the, the group has a has a chat group and when it, when it's not meeting in person there's a bulletin board an internet bulletin board the, i don't believe in those either i know you don't so probably you can I, I don't post things on the bulletin board other than like who's bringing the cookies that that kind of thing good because as you know, I don't believe in putting my name on anything that other people can access that could be read one way or the other in general. There you go. Right. 
So, so this agitating group, I'm now going to call them agitating. There are two of them, one less extreme than the other, post a couple of pieces about how the community should change its focus and change what? something that it does in accordance with these folks' political views. And they got a couple of very polite responses. Well, you know, good luck in your personal private endeavors. But for this and that and the other reason, it's probably not going to happen. And the people who posted polite responses happened to be men. At which point, the woman who's the principal bomb thrower had the unmitigated balls to put on the chat that she'd noticed that women were agreeing with her privately, but not on the chat. And so we had not only a political problem, a gender problem. So she can read all your minds. Yes, apparently. She has, again, confused politesse for persuasion. God. And it's all I can do not to respond on the chat group because that's exactly what she wants. She wants a big argument. This is really what folks like her want. They just want fighting. And they especially want fighting under the banner of peace, love, and understanding and gender equality. Don't you have a way to block people like that? Well, so far, everyone's being polite. What about please start your own chat? Tempting, but I'm afraid if I go after her, I won't be able to stop. A lot of pithy quotes come to mind, like George Bernard Shaw, silence is the preferred form of scorn i'm paraphrasing that <laughs> but but this person obviously doesn't subscribe to that no she thinks silence is agreement. agreement yes yes and there's nothing here's the thing there's nothing you can do with people like that i think this is where the block button comes in well the chat has some practical uses like when you need to know who's going to bring the cookies I guess that's what I'm saying. I've spent a lot of the last few days just trying to keep my big mouth shut. And I well, that, am that having trouble. All just, that all reinforces my community of one uh, approach. <laughs> I just, I, my, my brain just went into a fog because I watched Kevin try to come out of his house. Kevin the goat is snowed in, is he? He is. He's not happy. <laughs> yeah. You should have gotten Mountain Goats. Oh, I will tell you a movie that you should not watch for, for the okay. wrong reasons. I loved this movie. It is my favorite movie of the whole year. But you probably... Do they eat goats? No. Okay. But you probably won't like it because there's a, there's a little bit of blood. Not, yeah. not You could avoid looking at the blood. Just incidental blood. Yeah, you could. But the reason that you shouldn't watch this movie is, it, it, by the way, the movie is The Banshees of Inisherin. And oh, yeah, I've been thinking about watching it, actually. It's my favorite movie of the year, but you should not yeah. watch it because somebody has a pet donkey, and so I know what will happen. <laughs> I said to I, Spousal Unit, if Marcy watches this movie, it's it's game on for the miniature donkey. Oh, I, I've been fighting for the mini donkeys for... At least six years now. The sweetest okay. little donkey. Just so sweet. Aren't they? Well, yeah, but but one character in the movie has the right attitude. She's Irish, so she says, she says, uh, he brought the donkey in the house, and they're shite. <laughs> <laughs> I see all the time on some of my goat sites, you know, yes. that I follow on yes. Facebook. And they have goats in their houses with little diapers on. Yeah, it's disgusting. Don't do that. No, it's a lot of work. Plus, my goats just want to eat everything. I already have a puppy that wants to eat everything. Well, yeah, There's but There's almost don't... nothing left. It is. <laughs> you're going to be, you're going to revert to 60s. Like, everything in your in your house will be metal. Yeah, pretty much. You're metal going to have those high-tech metal chairs and metal loungers. By the way, I hear you fell off your lounge chair again. <laughs> yeah. I didn't fall off and I fell backwards. Again. But luckily, that chair is so big that, like, nothing really hit the floor except the chair. And then it was just my legs are sticking straight up in the air. I couldn't get off it. And I'm yelling, like, Frankie, Frankie. And, of course, he's getting his camera. <laughs> so I had to quickly roll out of it before you know get up because he wanted to take a picture which does not exist anywhere so don't even bother looking for it all three listeners 
he he did send me a text saying that you had managed to fall out of your chair again. I don't even know how that happened. I did not sit down heavy. He said you sit, sit down like an elephant. I know, but I'm and, not an and, elephant. And he though. added, and he added, and she's tiny. I'm more of a wombat than an elephant. I don't know how wombats sit down. I don't either, but I've been seeing a lot of them lately on just randomly. Not in my yard, but online. They're cute. I have no but idea. I want, ba- I want a backup. T- to the donkey plan? No. <laughs> you want a Dude. wombat if you can't have a miniature donkey? Is that what you're telling me? Now, I'm backing up to being a community of one. I'm all of a sudden getting bombed with these emails about side jobs that you can do if you hate people. I wonder if they listen to our podcast. Well, I don't know, but I'm wondering what some of the, you know, is that assassin maybe? I don't know what kind what was of that? a side assassin, job. Assassin, did you an just assassin? say? assassin? You yeah. want to be an assassin? Well, no. I'm afraid to open any of them. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. My lesson. I wouldn't. But, but I was trying to think of what would be a side job if you hate people. Perhaps, and the only... perhaps internet terrorist would be. <laughs> Well, that's pretty traceable. I was thinking more like maybe mob enforcer, but I don't know that they put out, you know, ads looking for them. Well, again, it would require you to be part of a community. That's true. A community of uh, mob enforcers. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want that. No. So don't open that email. Hell no. Don't don't open that email. Yeah, I get at least four a day. That say side jobs for people who hate people. I I wouldn't open that. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't opened it because I, I figure it either involves murder or some kind of nakedness, possibly. Oh yeah, nudity could definitely factor in. Unfortunately, don't open it. Assuming you've come this far because you enjoy the podcast, may we recommend my book? She said, "What? A life on the air." It's available at your neighborhood bookstore or on Amazon. And if you're feeling especially generous, please leave the podcast a good review. Thanks.